there are a couple of questions I need to ask you that you haven't ticked off yet. You did tick off liquidity. You did tick off debt ceiling. Um, I want to talk about inflation just real briefly, which you've mentioned. Um, I just want to underscore, sounds like what I heard you say is, yes, they've made progress with their efforts so far uh, in bringing it down from you know 9% headline CPI to 4.9 now. But it sounds like you think the, the road from here is going to be slower and harder in terms yeah. of getting inflation from where it is now down to sort of where the Fed is saying, hey, we're not stopping until we get to two and a half percent. Just explain your reasons for why you think it's going to be sticky. And just so you know, this interview is is being released the day after I had a, a long interview with Wolf Richter on this exact same topic. And he agrees with you. He talked a lot about the stickiness, particularly in the services side mm -hmm. of the equation so far. OK, so the, so the base effects over the next two months will bring inflation down to about three and a half to four percent, just because of the base effects of a year ago inflation readings. But from there, and I, I didn't hear your interview yet, but I assume he means wages. Wages are extremely sticky and service sector inflation and rents are very sticky. So I, I, I don't see inflation coming down much further than three and a half. In fact, there's a very good possibility that it will tick higher, closer to four, four and a half percent by the end of the year. And that is still twice as high of the, as the Fed's target. Okay. And is, is, and is that that potential increase um, uh, or, yeah, it, it, I guess where I'm going with this is one of the things that's helping CPI come down right now has been the year-over-year -year comparisons, which are, are more generous in terms of logging in a lower year-over-year -year increase. Right. But once we get through the second half of this year, that doesn't become as favorable. You're nodding as I'm exactly, saying. Exactly correct. Base effects okay. are less favorable after the summer. Okay. All right. So we have, we've got stickier uh, inflation ahead of us from here. Um, the Fed has been very, very clear that they're still gunning for 2%, that they are planning zero rate cuts this year, even though the market still thinks a little bit differently on that. Um, we had uh, Bullard from the Fed just out uh, earlier this week saying that he thinks, in fact, maybe two more hikes are necessary. Um, we also have the additional um, contractionary impact of tightening bank lending standards following this banking crisis that we've been talking about, right? And, and Chair Powell has said, hey, those actually act as additional rate hikes. Um, so in, in the mix of that context, what do you expect Fed policy to be here when inflation is going to be sticky? As far as we can tell in the data right now, the employment sector is really hanging in there, so they don't have to worry about that part of their mandate right now. Do you see them as surprising markets by being higher -er for longer -er than the markets currently priced in? Or do you think something's going to break and force their hand? What, what, what are you projecting? OK, the best way I can answer this and just allow me just a little bit of slack when I answer this. Sure. The, the, let's, banks are tightening lending standards and the Fed has avowed they have averred, better word, that they, are, they will let the tightening in, lend, in lending standards supplant their rate hikes. So I don't see the Fed hiking rates again this year. In fact, I still predict that there's a very high likelihood that they could be cutting rates by the end of this year. Okay. And let's just and, and here's why here's why I say and I and I say that the remember I just said that inflation could go higher. So then why it sounds contradictory because of what's happening in the banking system. And that's why I have a model because I don't sit here and predict what's going to happen in October and then stick to it no matter what. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm watching the dynamics in the in the banking sector. And, and let me just say this one fact and get this out. The 30 year fixed mortgage rate has been below the current T-bill rate since 2010. I, I want to say that again and, and let that sink in. And, and why, why is that important? So. And I, and it's I not this now. <laughs> say, say again. I, I said because it's not now, right? It, it, no, the thirty the thirty year fixed mortgage rate, the thirty year fixed mortgage is not no now it's seven percent exactly. Back seven. It's back to seven, right. but it's been it's been below that since two thousand and ten, right? So, so very so recent. things are different right now. Yeah, exactly. Things are very different right now, but the point why I'm trying to make is that all those loans, commercial real estate loans, and mortgages made, which is a very big part, especially of the regional banking. Uh, sector. 
all those loans, those that income is less than the T bill rate, uh, which is about five point one. You get a five point five too. Uh, a couple of days ago, last time I looked, on um, very short duration T bills. So that's going to perpetuate this bank run. I think Bianco calls it. Uh, Jim Bianco calls it a bank walk. <laughs> but money is le- deposits are leaving, and I believe, and Janet Yellen averred this as well that there's gonna be more you know it's a euphemism there's gonna be more bank mergers yeah yeah consolidations which is can a I, can white I, word for failures yeah <laughs> right that's you that's a euphemism for bank failures yeah and that's why because they just can't ever raise their deposit rate to match their income they receive on their assets so i predict if that intensifies and we see a plethora not just four but a lot of these regional banks going under, that's going to exacerbate and expedite the disinflation morphing to deflation, despite base effects, despite higher wages, because people will be getting fired <laughs> and won't have a job. That's a very high likelihood to happen. And then the Fed will be cutting rates, not raising them later this year. So watch out for that. Okay. Um, so... Uh, kind of a related question then. So um, it sounds like you're sort of in the camp of something's going to break here, you know, at the current tra- the, the current policy trajectory, right? Um, it sounds like you think the banking system is, you know, vulnerable to to more failures from here that might cause the Fed to have to rescue with with a rate cut or or, or more. Maybe we'll see. Um, do you have concerns about other things breaking? I mean, just I just want to I want to talk to Michael Pento from 15 months ago and I say, hey, Michael, in the next 15 months, the Fed's going to take the federal funds rate from (laughs) where it is today to five and a quarter. And who knows, maybe even higher. (laughs) Um, Do you think the economy can can sustain a cost of capital that 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 high or, you know, with, with, with the you of of. 15 months ago have said, geez, you know, the zombie companies are going to die and, you know, we're going to have, yeah, it's stress in the banking system, but we're probably going to have stress in some of these other areas too. And the consumer is going to start breaking. Um, you know, can, could, can we follow <laughs> Powell's plan of longer for higher here? Or do you really think in addition to banks, we may have some other big breakages at these, these high we rates? Haven't seen, we haven't seen anything yet in the commercial real estate front. That's going to break. The auto loans are very fragile. Um, collateralized loan obligations, the whole entire shadow banking systems on thin, thin ice, private equity, pension plans, all those things <laughs> are going to be in extreme pressure. And we haven't seen it yet. Adam, you said it yourself, 15 months. Monetary tightening or easing works with a long and variable lag between 12 and 18 months. That's the usual time frame. Well, we're not even close to 18 months yet. I mean, we're just approaching that time frame yet. So we haven't even seen the first rate hike yet. Really hit the, you know, maybe the first couple when it was went from zero to you know 75 beeps, but we have yet let me just re reinforce this one pack pack. In in the global financial crisis, the Fed stopped hiking at five and a quarter percent in the summer of 2006. Was that a good time? I mean, turn off CNBS for a second and think for yourself. Was the last time the Fed stopped hiking a great time to go long the stock market? No, because a year later, we started to have Bear Stearns uh, hedge funds that were real estate related break. That's when the market topped out. A year after that, everything fell apart. The whole global financial system fell apart. Well, again, we don't have to probably wait a year or two. I mean, it's possible we have to wait a year, but I think it's highly unlikely, highly improbable to wait that long because of the the rate of change of interest rates is twice as fast. We are also doing QT at this time, draining reserves, and the level of debt extent in the system is much greater. That pulls forward that entire timeline. But all the things I just mentioned are all on the come. Okay because of the delayed aspects of monetary tightening. 